And here it is, Convergence of a Foil series, and we're gonna talk about it right now. I hope you watched my previous definition on the piecewise continuous function because we need to use that to back up what we're gonna say. So there it is, Convergence of a Foil series. And here's the definition. Let f be piecewise continuous on minus l to l. If x0 is between minus l to l and both the left and right derivative of f exists, at x0, the Fourier series of f on x from minus f to l converges at x0 to half of the left limit at x0 and the right limit of x0, okay? It's half, so you add up to 2. Okay, that is the first definition. Now, 2 is that if both the right-hand derivative and the left derivative exist, I mean, respectively, at minus l to l, the Fourier series converges at both minus l to l to this thing over here. Okay, let's take some time to talk about this because it's vitally important that, that we know what we are dealing with. Right, f is piecewise continuous. So that is to say that f may not be continuous throughout minus l to l. Again, all the equations or all the functions that we have dealt with thus far, at least for most of them, you know, we're dealing with piecewise continuous curves. So at some points, you know, the points are discontinuous. Values of x0 are discontinuous. And that's what it implies over here. If we can think of a value of x0, which is discontinuous on a function, there is still, the Fourier series will still converge to a certain point. That point is going to be given by this thing over here. So let's just have a graphical representation, shall we? I think it's best that we do that. I hope you can see this. So let's just say x0 is here, and we got the certain curve. Let's just say the certain curve is discontinuous at x0. So we've got a certain point like that, and more than that. Now, you see, for all we know, this could be a certain function in, by which we want to find the Fourier analysis, which in, let's just say we do. So x0 is discontinuous at this point, there is no proper derivative. However, what does the definition say? The, the definition say, or the convergence of a Fourier series tells us, that if we can find the left and right hand derivatives, which should not be a problem, this point, the Fourier series will converge to a certain point. Well, what's the certain point? The certain point is basically we're going to take the left and right hand limits of the certain point of the function and we're going to divide it by 2. So if you could notice and picture yourself in the graph, okay, that point would be equal to this thing over here. I hope you can see that. In a way, you can think about it as the average, uh, so to speak, or loosely speaking. This one is going to be the, the, the right limit, so it's x0 plus. This is going to be the left limit of x0 minus. Okay, and the Fourier series will converge to that point over there, and that is uh, what it's, it's trying to say. Now, there's another implication, and if you are careful to notice, you will notice it immediately. If x is continuous, right, and this is really quite um, easy to understand, it's quite obvious. If f is continuous from minus l to l, notice that for this thing over here, whatever point we pick, the left and the right limits are going to be the same. So basically, it's going to be half add up with function of f of x plus function f of x, which is actually going to give us function x. Uh, this is, it's just basically this plus this divided by 2 is going to give us function x. So what it tells us is that for this certain function, the Fourier series will converge to the function at points in which x is continuous. If it's not continuous, it converges to the, the center of the, the discontinuous point. Okay? And this point is the discontinuous point, converges to the center. But in which is it continuous, and you better make sure that they are continuous because there are certain functions that you find in which they seem to be continuous but they may not be. How to check? Just find the derivative or find that they exist and there's a derivative. How about, you know, for points which are continuous, assuming this is, the Fourier series will converge to that graph. That is what this definition is telling us. Okay? Well, I'll just write it down here for for continuous f, for continuous f, notice that um, the x0, whether you approach it from the left or the right, is going to be the same. Now, because it's continuous. So that's point number one, we're dealing with that. Now, point number two, pay very careful attention. If both the right and the left hand limits, or the right hand limit of minus l, which for arguments sake, let's just put over here, minus l, which is over here, and of l, which is over here, if the right hand of the right limit of minus l exists, so basically there is that derivative considering the right hand side of the graph. Well, I'll just draw the derivative as that. And the left uh, hand, uh, the left derivative at l, so basically we consider this point, the left derivative is over here. If they both exist, the Fourier series converges at both, keyword here, at both, it's a common mistake students make, at both l and minus l to half of the right hand limit of minus l plus the left hand limit of l. So what it's trying to tell us is this, we take the left hand limit of L, 
basically we want to approach L or approach L from the left hand side and take the function of that which will give us this thing over here okay and then we want to do that the same for minus L but we approach it from the right hand side the right hand limit which will give us the point over here these two points will converge to half of, of the two end up together so again it's like the average so it's this thing over here like that okay which is this point over here and we just put it like that and we put it like this okay so basically that's what it's trying to tell us now, what is the implication? The implication is, remember, we're always trying to find the Fourier series from minus L to L. But this tells us that, let's just say if the graph is, goes on, you know, goes on like this, the Fourier series will not follow the graph outside the limits. That's quite interesting because you will soon find it out. Instead, the Fourier series will converge to this point over here, this point on this side, and this point at this side, and they are the, actually the same points because at both, the, the, L, the boundaries of minus L to L, which is basically here and here. So let's just think about this graph. We can kind of picture the Fourier series going something like this, following the curve, and then remember, this continues. So it needs to approach this point. It needs to converge at that point, which it will do. And after that, it will try to follow the curve again and converge back to this new point, which is uh, given by this one over here. Sorry, uh, this one over here. So based, our Fourier series would end up something like this. Okay, And that is what it's trying to tell us. Points at this continuous take the take the left the left limit the right limit of that point and divide it by two and at the borders of minus l to l they will converge to both of them converge to adding up the right limit of minus l and the left hand limit of l um, at half so basically it's this point they have and this convergence of the Fourier series now a very interesting point that you will notice okay and I draw this point myself and I was quite happy when I did that. Notice that the information that we get for the convergence of the Fourier series comes from the function of f, okay? Okay, I say again. Notice that the information that we get uh, regarding the convergence of the Fourier series comes from the function of f. It does not come from the Fourier series. Look at it. At points where this continues, we are using this function. This function is f. This is not the Fourier series. We're using the function f, function f, adding them up. And then later for the, the left hand, the minus l and l, the boundaries of the function, we are again using the function. So basically, that is what it's trying to tell us. The convergence of the Fourier series, we would get the information from the function, not from the Fourier series. Though I must say that, you know, it's not limited. There are certain, you know, techniques we can use to test for convergence on the Fourier series. But this uh, is try trying to tell us that the information we get regarding the convergence of the Fourier series comes from the function, which is quite uh, unique and is quite, um, I, I like it a lot, okay? So, convergence of the Fourier series. Let's go swiftly to an example, which, you know, I would uh, like to show.